Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 10 of module 3 of the course Game Theory and Economics. So, what we have been di discussing in this course, uh, in this module so far is that we have been taking up different applications of Nash equilibrium and uh, the current applications, uh, application that we have been discussing is the case of war of attrition uh, where there are two parties and they are fighting with each other over certain object, maybe a prey, two hunters might be fighting over a prey and uh, the more they continue to fight, it is worse for both of them. They are inflicting damages on each other. So, the earlier my rival gives up, it is better for me, then I get the object, but my payoff from getting the object will definitely depend on how much time he has spent in fighting with me. So, this is the uh, setting. and. We have found the, that the main uh, result of this framework is that in the Nash equilibrium there will be an asymmetry in the sense that uh, one player will give up immediately without fighting, without spending any time in fighting with uh, the rival and the rival will get the object and uh, vice versa in the sense that the, the rival uh, can give up at the beginning itself and the first player can get the object uh, without fighting. <coughs> so, both uh, sets of Nash equilibria are possible. Uh, today, we shall go further and look at different aspects of this same setting. So, one exercise that we want to do in real life application is the following. Two firms are developing competing products for a market of fixed size. The longer a firm spends on development, the better its product. But the first firm to release its product has an advantage. The customers it obtains will not subsequently switch to its rival. A firm that releases its product first at time t captures the share h t of the market, where h is a function that increases from 0 to time capital T with h 0 is equal to 0 and h of capital T is equal to 1. The remaining market share is left for the other firm. If the firms release their products at the same time, each obtains half of the market. Each firm wishes to obtain the highest possible market share, model this situation as a strategic game and find its Nash equilibrium or equilibria. So, in the nutshell what is happening is that there are two firms, these are the players, set of players. What are the actions that they are undertaking? <coughs> they are deciding what time they will spend in developing a product. And uh, if I develop a product and release my product before my rival, then the time that I have spent in developing the product before releasing the product into the market, uh, that will affect my market share. In particular, if I spend T time to develop the product and release it before my uh, rival, then I get H T of the market share. So, T is something which I shall decide on. So, in particular T can be of two, can take two values T 1 and T 2. T 1 is the time that firm 1 has decided 
it will spend on developing the product. T2 is the time that the firm to decides to uh, develop on the product. So, T1 and T2 are the then decision variables, actions T1, T2, they are the time spent by firms 1 and 2 respectively. in developing the product. What is the range of T? T can take any value between 0, but not infinity, but capital T. So, there is a maximum uh, till which one can spend in developing the product which is given by capital C. And uh, if I as I have said, if I spend uh, H T amount of time developing the product, I get H T share of the market provided my T is less than the T of the other firm. <coughs> and so, if I get H T fraction of the market, my rival gets 1 minus H T fraction of the market. And each firm tries to maximize the share of the market, because if you remember what is being said is that the uh, each firm wishes to obtain the highest possible market share. So, my uh, aim will be to maximize H that is the portion of the market that I am getting. So, that is the game. Uh, each of two people has one unit of resource, each person chooses how much of the resource to use in fighting the other individual and how much to use productively. If each person divorce y i to fighting, then the total output is y i f of y 1 uh, f y 2 which is greater than equal to 0 and person i obtains the fraction p i of y 1 y 2 of the output, where p i y 1 y 2 is equal to 1 if y i is greater than y j is equal to half if y i is equal to y j is equal to 0 if y i is less than y j. The function f is continuous and decreasing in both y 1 and y 2 and satisfies f of 1 1 is equal to 0. Each person cares only about the amount of output she receives and prefers to receive as much as possible. Specify this situation as strategic game and find its Nash equilibrium or equilibrium. Uh, there are two players. And they are fighting with each other and they are devoting y 1 and y 2 of resources to fight with each other. So, this is their actions y 1, y 2. They can take the value between 0 and 1 and highest so the highest value for y 1 is 1, the lowest value is 0, same for uh, y 2. Uh, when they fight with each other and devote this y 1 and y 2, obviously, they will be left with less uh, y's or resources that they had to begin with. So, the total output that they will get if uh, they devote y 1 and y 2 is given by f of y 1 y 2, where f is decreasing in y 1 y 2. 
So, more you spent in fighting with your enemy, you are left with less output and so the, the, the total output which could be a result of the, the resources of both the people uh, will go down. And uh, the point is that if even if I win that is even if uh, I get the total output f, uh, it may happen that I do not get the entire thing, but a part of it depending on y 1 and y 2. So, in particular i gets p i of f, where p i is given by 1 if y i is greater than y j half So, in short <coughs> if I have spent more resources than my rival, I get the full of this the entire thing. Uh, if my spending of resource is equal to his spending of resource, I get half of this f and uh, if I am spending less out less, less resource than my uh, rival, then I am not getting any part of this f. So, in other words u i is equal to f of y 1 y 2 So, this is how it looks like. The question is uh, which are the Nash equilibria? So, this is how this is what the players want to maximize, they want to maximize this u, uh, keeping in mind that uh, if y1 and y2 go on rising, this f goes on declining. So, they will like to choose uh, as little y as possible. Now, what are the Nash equilibria here? So, one exercise that we shall do about war of attrition is the following.
So, this is the question suppose two firms are fighting over market share higher spending on advertisement by a firm raises its share and total profit. Total profit is denoted by S i, S i is a function of E i where E i is the advertisement expenditure by firm i. Highest value of S i is 1, so this is a normalized value, uh, lowest is 0, so S varies between 0 and 1. If a firm spends more than its rival, it's, it gets the entire market, the rival gets nothing. There is a law that E i cannot exceed half and it is greater than 0. Model this situation as a strategic game and find the Nash equilibria, more equilibria. Is there a different pair of E 1, E 2 uh, giving firms higher payoff? Uh, one more point, if market share and profit. If E 1 is equal to each gets ha half of the market share and profit. Uh, so, we have to uh, model this situation as a game strategic game. So, who, who are the players here? The players are the two firms firm 1 and firm 2. Okay. Actions what are the actions that they choose E i and E i is greater than 0, it can be equal to 0 also and uh, E i is less than equal to half. Okay. Uh, e i is the advertisement expenditure. Just a moment, this is greater than equal to 0. All right. Uh, and payoff. So U i is the payoff of firm i. It is a function of two variables, e one, e two. <coughs> i can be one or two. It is equal to s of E i sorry if it gets if it spends more than the other firm it gets the entire market which means it gets 1 minus E i if E i is greater than E j and it is half minus E i if E i is equal to E j and it is equal to minus E i if E i is less than E j. Remember the total market that is there, the market sh share that, that is possible, the highest market share that is possible is 1. So, if my advertisement expenditure is more than uh, the other firm's advertisement expenditure, I get the entire market, the highest value of S in that case is 1. And if uh, our spendings are same, I get half of the entire market. So, that basically is normalized to half. So, this becomes the uh, payoff function of each player. We have to find out what is the Nash equilibrium. For that, I have to find out what is the best response function. Of um, I say. So it is a function of E j, and it is given by what? Remember the highest value that E j can take is half and the lowest value that it can take is 0. Uh, so, always the firm i 
we like to have his expenditure slightly higher than the other firm's expenditure. And in doing so, it will have like to have an expenditure greater than E j, but by what by how much there is no any unique E i which is greater than E j, but lowest among all the possible values that it can take. So, therefore, it is given by this null set. If E r E j is less than half, right. Uh, so, this is one case if E j is less than half, if E j is equal to half then what happens? If E j is equal to half, remember in that case E i cannot be more than E j, because the highest value that E s can take is half. So, what player i can do in this case is make is make his expenditure equal to E j, in that case he is getting what? if E i is equal to half then he is getting half minus half is equal to 0 or he can spend 0 in which case uh, his payoff remains 0. So, these are the two possibilities that he can do. So, in this case uh, E i can be equal to half or 0 both giving i 0 payoff. So, in this case what we are having is this. So, this is the case these are the best response functions. Uh, let us now plot the two best response functions and try to find out what is the Nash equilibrium. So, here you have E 1 and E 2 and let us say these are the values half and half. Uh, we have seen that if E 2 is less than half then there is no best response for firm 1. So, for this range there is no best response. If E 2 is equal to half then E 1 the best E 1 could be either 0 or half. So, this is one possibility and this is another possibility both are equally good. Uh, so, this is B 1. What about uh, B 2? We have seen that uh, if E 1 is less than half then there is no best response for form 2, but if E 1 is equal to half this is one possibility that E 2 uh, becomes 0 or E 2 becomes half. So, this is B 2, B 1 as a function of E 2 and B 2 as a function of E 1. Therefore, the plotting the best responses So, this is the Nash equilibrium. This is the unique Nash equilibrium. Interestingly, the payoff of the two players uh, are 0. because both are choosing their highest possible 
advertisement expenditures and the market is getting shared and the payoff is becoming half minus half therefore, 0. Is there any other pair which give the uh, which gives the players better payoff than the Nash equilibrium payoff? Is there a different pair E1, E2 giving the firms higher payoff? It appears that there is uh, at least one pair if E1 is equal to E2 is equal to 0, the payoffs are again the market is getting divided here half and half which is better than which are better than 0 0. So, there is at least there is at least one better pair of actions. So, that is it. What we are going to take up now is another application of Nash equilibrium which is known as the auction. So, what does auction mean? Uh, auction basically is a problem of uh, allocating of some precious resource among contending parties. So, this precious resource can be anything, it can be uh, an object of art, it can be oil field, it can be mobile uh, frequency, it, it can be radio frequency also. So, all these things are uh, sold by the government or by the person who is owning it, not necessarily the owner always, uh, to people who want to have that object. The people who are wanting to have the object obviously will compete with each other and try to outdo uh, each other by announcing high and high prices. This quotation of the prices are known as bids. So, we say bidders, people who are submitting bid uh, are called bidders, they are quoting prices. But as we shall see the price that I quote for that object is not necessarily the price that I pay. Uh, there are different kinds of auctions. In some auctions you pay the price that you quote, in some case you pay the price which has been quoted by someone else. But nevertheless the person who is quoting the highest price uh, will generally get the object. So, that is the idea. Now, suppose there are, uh, so suppose there are n people or n bidders. Now, there are two sets of things to remember here. Each bidder uh, will have some valuation for the object and it is not necessary that the valuation of any particular bidder will be same as the valuation of any other bidder. This valuations can differ across the bidders. So, we shall call these valuations as V. In particular, V i is the valuation of bidder i for the object. Now, this is one set of uh, variables that we shall remember that is V 1, V 2, V n. There is another set of values uh, that one needs to remember, these are the bids. So, bids are B 1, B 2, B n. This is the symbol that we are going to use for the prices that are quoted by each of the bidders. So, bidder 1 is having a valuation 1, 
and bidding B1. Uh, bidder 2 has a valuation of V2 and bidding uh, B2 like that. Our uh, task in study of auction theory, incidentally auction theory is a separate branch within economics, uh, is to see in different kinds of auctions, uh, is the allocation of the object efficient? Is it the case that the person who values the object most is getting the object or does it, uh, can it go to someone else? We also want to look at uh, whether the person who is conducting the entire thing, who is known as the auctioneer, is getting the maximum possible revenue from the entire bidding process. So, uh, is it, uh, does it maximize the revenue? So, these are some of the questions that we shall be interested in and we shall like to answer those questions. Now, as I just uh, said that there are different kinds of auctions. The first kind of auction that we shall uh, deal with is known as A second price sealed bid auction. So, think of the general idea of, of auction that we have. Uh, there are many people who have valuations for this object V1, V2, etc. And we are going to assume that this V1 and V2 are known to everyone. So, it is a common knowledge how I value the object. And I also know what are the valuations uh, any other player, uh, any other players possess for that object. Now, in general uh, auctions, the auctions that we are familiar with, price starts from a very low value and it goes up. Now, if it goes up, then I can imagine that any person, any bidder will have a maximal amount of bidding beyond which he or she will not go. So, if that is the case, then ultimately the auction is a fight between two people. Uh, if I think that their maximals are different, maximal bidding that each person will submit is, diff is different from others, then it is a fight between two people, two highest maximal bidders. Okay. Now, if that is the case and suppose B1 is greater than B2, that is player 1, uh, the maximum amount that he is ready to pay is B1 and the maximum bidding that player 2 will do is B2, then what is the optimal bidding for player 1? In this case, uh, observe that player 1 uh, will not optimally beat B1, rather he will beat something B2 plus suppose epsilon, because if he is bidding more than player 2, he is getting the object. So, there is no point why he should bid B1 and B epsilon can be taken to uh, 0, it can approach 0, which means that player 1's optimal bidding can be thought to be equal to B1, B2 itself. Uh, he will not bid his own maximal thing. Uh, so, this is the idea, the general idea of auction that we have and this is uh, sought to be replicated in kind of sealed bid auction, where people do not observe other people's bidding. I do not see what the other people is doing. I do, I do whatever I do, I submit whatever my maximal bid is, but if my bid is the maximal, suppose my B1 is the highest, then I will get the object, but the price that I will pay 
is not this B1, but this B2. So, by, by this technique of sealed bid, what we want to do is to replicate uh, the, the original auction that we are talking about, where people can see each other's bids, but here people cannot see each other's bids. Nevertheless, the auctioneer, when he receives all these uh, bids from people, from the players, he picks up the bid which is the highest and decides that this player who has submitted the highest bid will get the object, but he will not pay the price that he has bid, he will pay the price of the highest of the other players other than him and that is, that is why it is called second price auction, not the first price, but the second price. And it is sealed bid that uh, I do not know what is the price submitted by other players, what is the bid submitted by other players, that is why it is sealed bid. And it is important that it is sealed bid because if you remember in this strategic game, I do not know the action uh, taken by any other player. So, it has to be a sealed bid auction. So, this is the rule of the game. Now, if I want to write this in terms of the language of game theory, the language that we have introduced so far, then I have to specify three elements. So, the players, who are the players? The players are the bidders and uh, they are n in number, n can be any value between, uh, it can be any value which as long as, as it is greater than or equal to 2. There cannot be any auction if uh, there is just one player, uh, one bidder to get the object. Action. So, what are they trying to, uh, what are they deciding on? So, it is set of bids, all right, which is any non negative number. So, B i is being determined by player i. Finally, preferences. Okay. Now, in general, let us write what is the payoff of player i. Uh, player i will get the object under two circumstances. One is that his bid, that is bi, is higher than any other bid all the other players are bidding something which is less than his bid. Now, that is one possibility, but what happens if there are two people who have bid the highest bids? For example, it may happen that B i, which is the bid of player i is equal to B 1 uh, or suppose B 7, then who gets the object? So, this is a case of tie and we will follow the rule of tie breaking that if B 7 is equal to B 10, suppose that is the bid of player 7 is equal to bid of player 10 and this is the highest, then 7 will get it. Why 7 will get it? Because 7 is less than 10 and what is the rationale for that? Why are we assuming that the player with the lower number is getting the object. The reason is that or the kind of rational is that we are going to assume that V 1 is strictly greater than V 2 etcetera, etcetera. V n and V n is strictly greater than 0, which means that player 1 values the object most, player 2's valuation for the object is less etcetera, etcetera. The, la the least valuation for the object uh, is uh, for player n, but which is still greater than 0. Uh, and these are different numbers that also has to be remembered. So, in, in a case where 
bid of two players are equal, uh, then the object is being allocated to person with the lower number because that person values the object more than the other person. So, that is the rational for this, rational for tie breaking. Now, so player I will get the object then under two circumstances, one is B I is greater than every other bid, then player I will get it and player I can get the object if suppose B I is equal to <coughs> some other B, but I is less than the number or the index of that other B. In these two cases, I will get the object. If I gets the object, then what is his payoff? Let us try to write that. So, it is written as V i minus B bar, where B bar is the bid of the highest bid So, uh, and this will happen if B i is greater than B bar or number of people who submitted B bar numbers of people, let us say because there might be more than one person who has submitted B bar, numbers of people who submitted B bar are greater than I. So, under these two circumstances, player y will get uh, v i minus b bar, one is when his bid is the highest, single highest bid, then he will get the object obviously and the price that he pays is the, is the, is the bid of the, of the people, who, uh, of the person uh, who has bid the highest bid among the set of other players. So, his payoff in that case is the valuation of his for the object minus the price that he is paying that is B bar. He can get the object also if his bid is same as some other people's bid and both these bids are highest and his number is less than the number of the other person. In other cases, u i is simply equal to 0. You know, what can be the other cases that uh, b i is less than b bar that is one case or b i is equal to b bar, but i is greater than the number of the people who have submitted b bar. In those cases uh, outrightly we can say that u i is equal to 0. Notice uh, it is not necessarily that this value v i minus b bar is positive. It may happen that this value is 0, this may turn out to be negative also, uh, because it may happen a person has a low v, but has uh, submitted a very high b bar, b i. Mm, so, bit can be in theory can be higher than your valuation. In that can, in that case it may happen that you win the object, but the payoff that you get is negative or it can be 0. So, this is uh, the general setting, we shall stop here, we shall try to see what are the Nash equilibria which can be derived uh, in, uh, in the case of second price sale bid auction. So, before we finish this lecture, uh, let me take you through what we have discussed in this lecture. Uh, we have ended the discussion of 
war of attrition. We have looked at the various aspects of war of attrition, uh, but the simple thing that has to be highlighted is that in equilibrium in the original model of war of attrition, uh, people submit different, people take different kinds of action. In particular, one person just uh, withdraws from the fight immediately, uh, there is no fight in equilibrium. But we have seen that there can be variations where uh, in the equilibrium there are fights. Uh, for example, in the last case that we have seen, people fight for a long time in fact. And we have started the discussion of auctions and we have started the discussion of particularly uh, second price sale bit auction. See you in the next class. Thank you. In the product release game, when the time of release is same, suppose firm 1 gets the entire market and then what is the equilibrium in this case. So, let us try to remember what was the product release game and uh, what was the equilibrium. So, there are two firms which are planning to launch a product. If I launch earlier, so if I launch at this time uh, T 1 suppose, I get this much share of the market, but longer I wait for the product to develop in my research, uh, I will get a bigger share of the market. So, more higher T I choose, greater share of the market I get, but there is a problem that if uh, I wait for a long time the other firm can uh, launch his product earlier than mine and get a uh, part of the market and I will be left with the rest of the market. The equilibrium we saw was the following, uh, it was given by T star T star where H T star equal to half which means that uh, they will uh, they will release their goods at the same time T star and what is the property of this T star uh, at T star a firm if it announces it launches its goods at T star it gets half of the market this half represents that share of the market. Now, uh, this was the case where <coughs> if the time is the same then market is shared in equal parts. Here, if T 1 is equal to T 2, then 1 gets the entire market. Question is, what is the equilibrium? Our claim is that there is no equilibrium here. Uh, and what is the reason? Uh, reason is that if T 1 is equal to T 2, then 2 will have profitable deviation remember at T 1 is equal to T 2 uh, the market is equally shared. Uh, sorry, the market entirely goes to firm 1. So, uh, the firm 2 will choose a time which is less than T 1 and will get some portion of the market does not matter what, but it will get some positive portion of the market. Uh, so, division by 2 is profitable. Now, this cannot happen if T 1 plus T 2 is equal to 0, uh, then firm 2 cannot charge cannot fix a time less than T 1 which is equal to 0. So, in that case firm 2 will choose a time just little bit above T 1, so that uh, if T 1 chooses 0, it gets 0 portion of the market, so that the rest of the market goes to firm 2. So, if T 1 is equal to T 2 there cannot be an equilibrium, if T 1 is not equal to T 2 that cannot be an equilibrium either, then 1 will have a profitable division because 
if T1 is equal to T2, uh, firm 1 will choose a price just equal to T2, so at time just equal to T2 and get the entire market. So, that is the idea. Uh, so, there cannot be an equilibrium in this case. Briefly describe the second price sealed bid auction. Okay. Second price sealed bid auction. Players and bidders actions possible bids non negative numbers and preferences uh, if B i is greater than B bar, where B bar is the highest bit of other players, uh, then uh, payoff of player i is equal to V i minus B bar. Also, if B i is equal to B bar, but i is less than j, where j is bidding B bar then u i is same uh, that is v i minus b bar otherwise 0. Thank you.